Hi, I'm Malik Jordan from Learn Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com, and today we're going to be taking a look at a lot of uh, menu options in Resolve that most of you never heard of before. So, let's start. These are not like secret features or anything. Uh, these are just menu items uh, in Resolve that are very helpful that I noticed that a lot of people don't know that these options even exist in Resolve. Now let's take a look at the first feature. Now I have my timeline here with uh, a lot of clips on the timeline. If I open the timeline menu, one of the options here says selection follows play hit. If I click it, what will happen now is that any clip that is under the play hit will be selected. So for example, to select this clip, all I need to do is to move the playhead on top of it and notice that now this clip just became selected and this one is not. And to move to the next clip, I can just place the playhead here. Now this will be very beneficial if you're editing using keyboard shortcuts. So for example, if I want to delete this clip, all I need to do is to move the playhead on top of it here and now it's selected. And simply by hitting shortcut key on my keyboard, I just deleted this particular clip. And if I want to select the clip before it, I just need to place the playhead on top of it. Once you edit with keyboard shortcuts, you'll discover that this is one of the most important options you use all the time. The next thing is that a lot of people are familiar with the quick export option in the cut page. So if you go to the cut page, there's a quick export button. What a lot of people don't know is that in the edit page, if you go to file, you can access the same quick export option by simply selecting quick export here. And this is the same quick export menu now on the edit page. The next thing is project notes. What also a lot of filmmakers don't know is that you can add notes to your projects in Resolve. You can simply go to the notes by simply going to file and here you have an option for project notes. If I open it, I can add a note to this project. For example, this is a demo project. And if I hit save, now I just saved this note. And if someone else opens the project later, they can simply go to file, project notes, and they will find the note here. This can be very useful if you're collaborating with other filmmakers where you're sending the project to them, or if you want to send a note to yourself in the future, telling your future self what is this project and what to do with it. A lot of people also don't know that there is a built-in transcoder inside DaVinci Resolve. So let's say you have a bunch of files and you want to convert these files from format A to format B. There is actually a built-in tool in Resolve for that. To get to the transcoder, you simply go to File and there's an option here that says Media Management, click it. And this is the Media Management window. To the right here, you have the option for Clips and you can select transcode. So now you can select all the clips in the timeline and render all the clips separately to a new folder with the format you choose. And you can select a lot of options here to get the exact format you want to export to. That can be very powerful. Let's say you have a lot of clips that you know, our H.264, which means that even though they are small in size, but they're harder to play on your system and you just want to convert all of them permanently, this is where you can do this and it's very easy. The next thing is edit history. So for example, I'll just trim this clip here and trim it from this side. I'll maybe I'll add a new clip and I'll simply open the effect library, go to generators and for example, drag a window here. Now, note that if I go to edit, history. I have a history here showing me the history of the actions I took on the timeline, which means that I do not have to keep on clicking command Z to go one step at a time. I can simply go, you know what? I need to go back to when I removed the clip a while ago and just click here and I just undo to that particular moment. And if I go to edit history, there is an option here to open history window. If I open it, this window will have a history of all of my actions and I can totally jump between different points in time. So this is, for example, the first point is when I opened the file and this is all the way until I drag the clip and this is when I drag the generator. So this makes the whole process much faster for you. So if you want to go back to a certain action in time, you don't have to go control Z, control Z all the way. You can simply open the window, uh, the history window and just find the exact point you want to go back to. This can save you a lot of time. Sometimes you want to create a copy of your timeline. The way most of us do it is by simply going to the uh, timeline itself, control C, control V to make a copy of the timeline and then open it, which is like 10 steps. However, while you're working on your timeline, you can simply go to edit and there's an option here that says duplicate the current timeline. If I click it, Resolve will make a copy of the timeline and it will actually open the copy of the timeline. So Resolve will create the copy 
paste it in the same folder and open the new timeline, which makes it very easy for you to create backups of your timelines or to create different versions of your timeline. Another option is the fade to playhead. For example, I want to create a fade in for this uh, clip but I don't want to drag uh, the fade handler manually, for example. There's a certain point where I want to uh, fade in to finish. So for example, I'll just simply place the playhead here. I simply, by opening the trim menu, I can select fade in to playhead. And note that Resolve created a fade in that started at the beginning of the clip and ended exactly at the time of the playhead. The next option is the cleanup video tracks. So for example, I have this clip on top of this clip, which means simply that when I play, only the top video will be showing on the monitor and the lower clip here, so the clip at the bottom, will not be actually shown in the video at all. However, the clip is still on the timeline. That might not be something you want to use, so just you just want to remove all the clips from the timeline that are not actually used. To do that is pretty simple. I'll simply open the timeline uh, menu and there's an option here to clean up video tracks. So for example, if I select flatten and use clips, what will happen is that resolve just removed the clip that was not showing on the timeline at all and it was replaced with the clip on top, which makes the timeline much cleaner. Let's undo. Another option here is to simply go to timeline, clean up video tracks and select change unused clip colors to orange for example. And now this clip, because no parts from this clip are being viewed on the monitor at any time in the film, just became orange, which makes it much easier for you to identify these clips and work with them. Maybe you forgot to add these clips uh, to the timeline. Maybe you forgot to trim the clip on top, for example. This makes your work much easier. And one of the most important options is the ripple timeline markers. So for example, I'm just gonna come to this point here in the timeline and uh, create a marker. So I have a marker here and I have another marker, for example, at this point. Let's add a marker. Great. Now see what happens when I ripple delete the clip in the middle here. So I'll simply delete it and note that this marker changes position. Let's undo. Note that this is the original position of the marker. And once I deleted the clip, this marker moved to the left to maintain its position uh, relative to the clip it's on top of. However, this might not be something you want to do. For example, you want to be able to delete all the clips, but you want this marker to be at a particular time in the clip all the time. So what to do? Let's undo and simply go to timeline. And there's an option here to enable or disable ripple timeline markers. If I click, I just disabled it. And now notice the position of the marker with this option disabled. I'll select the clip, delete it. And this marker remained exactly in place. The next one is very important. Uh, a lot of people want to create, uh, um, you know, like a wider video. So change the aspect ratio of the video they're using uh, by adding black bars to the top on the bottom of the video. However, it's usually very tricky to get these bars correct, you know, at the, with the right aspect ratio and position the upper bar in the right place and the lower bar in the right place. And Resolve is pretty simple. I can simply open the timeline menu and to the bottom here, I have an option for output blanking. This allows me to select from different aspect ratios. For example, I'll select 2.49 and note that the clip now has these perfectly positioned uh, black bars on top of bottom. And if we make it full screen, our video looks definitely more cinematic. And of course we can go to timeline, output blanking again and change the aspect ratio to whatever we want or we can simply reset this to go back to the original video. This is one of the most important features because I get a lot of emails asking me about this very simple feature all the time. The next option is uh, to find the current timeline in the media pool because we all know that if you right click on any clip for example you can select find in media pool and you can find this particular clip in the media pool resolve will just take you there. However what if you want to find the timeline itself in the media pool it's pretty simple. You can can simply go to timeline and select find current timeline in media pool and resolve will guide you to the timeline itself. The last one is very tricky. Sometimes what will happen is this. There is this menu in resolve. If you right click on the stop button, there is this option to stop and go to the last position. If it's activated, what will happen is resolve will remember the position of the playhead. And when I click the space bar, it will play. However, once I click the space bar again, what will happen is that resolve will go back to the last position 
that I move the playhead to. So for example, if I manually place the playhead here at this particular point in time, play, now notice that when I stop, the playhead snapped back to that position. And that can be very frustrating. So the menu here is simply to right click on the stop button and uncheck stop and go to last position. And now it will be much easier for you because this is normal behavior. You just, just play and whenever you stop, uh, the playhead will stop at the particular point you stopped at. So if you like this, please visit us at filmsimplified.com where you can join our free Resolve Crash Course that is designed for the absolute beginner and takes you through every single tab in Resolve. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com